who's got a patient approach at the plate, solid contact in the minors, could be a center fielder. And it's going to be interesting how the 23-year-old stacks up against the third candidate here, Roman Quinn. I, you know, Roman Quinn has all the potential in the world. Remember, the Phillies, they shipped out Nick Williams. Quinn can play center field. And Roman Quinn can steal a lot of bases. The question about Roman Quinn is, can he get on base to steal bases? There you go. It's going to be an interesting situation in Philly. And if you take the position that there are two spots for three players, if you take that position, I'm going to throw some mud in that water in just a moment, then you've got a choice between those three. And I think with the contract, I think that... Jay Bruce probably gets the first up. I don't like that. I think Bruce will be a bust. He's not getting any younger. And he strikes out a ton. I think the Phillies, from their moves they made last year, they like Hazley better. I think Hazley, if I had to pick, I had to gamble, I would say Hazley one, Bruce two, Quinn three, but I think Quinn is the most intriguing of the bunch. Now, here's the mud in the water. What about Alec Baum? Now, you say Alec Baum. Alec Baum went through three competitive levels of minor leagues in 2019 and hit 305 with 21 homers in 125 games combined between Class A Lakewood Class A Clearwater, and Double A Reading. He had success at all three levels. It's probably a good guess he would have started the year at AAA. But now we know there's not going to be a AAA season. It doesn't appear. It looks like they're going to have extended Major League rosters. And in late April, Baum signed with Scott Boris. So, <laughs> mud in the water, here we go. Could the Phillies, would the Phillies, might the Phillies do this? Try to work Baum at first base. Remember, they got Gene Segura purportedly to come in and play third. Might they try to work Eric Baum at first base and move their slugger, Reese Hoskins, who's never been a fielding gem, to DH? There's mud in the water. If they did that, because I think Baum's hit skill ranks above any of those three outfielders, Hazley or Quinn or Bruce, if they put Baum in that situation sooner than later and they move Hoskins to DH, I think that's Philly's best lineup. Now, will they do it? And, and we've talked about this on this show. You've heard it on other shows on the network. This is not your typical fantasy season. This is not at all your typical regular season. Look, right now, you, if you have 80 games, every team has a chance. You know, any team can go off on an eight- or nine-game winning streak. Any team can go off on an eight- or nine-game losing streak. In 2020, in reality... You can ill afford an eight or nine game losing streak. In fantasy in 2020, you can ill afford to get way behind if you're season long in a category or categories because it's going to be hard to catch up. 
I love the fact I'm in leagues that are head-to-head weekly because after the week, you kind of get to start over with a new opponent. If I have a bad week, I may lose that week. I may lose categories. I may come in if you got 15 categories and go, what, maybe 5 and 10, but then the next week I got a chance to go 10 and 5. I love weekly, head-to-head fantasy scoring in 2020. But the Phillies have those options with players. And, of course, you've also got the option McCutcheon could DH. Harper could get a game at DH. Uh, You can rotate, and I think they will. But I think the overall effect, day in, day out, probably revolves around the outfield conglomeration, or it could Alec Baum. Okay. We've covered the Mets. We've covered the Phillies. You know, I'm not going to leave the Marlins out. I just can't do it. And you've got a new player in their outfield, Corey Dickerson, who hit 304 last year, who I think is going to hit third in that lineup. I think he is very underrated in fantasy. I know he plays on the Marlins, but last I checked, Miami did not get shut out 162 games last year. And remember, he's behind two fairly decent on-base percentage guys, Jonathan Villar and Brian Anderson. And Aguilar may hit cleanup. Now, I know he's had health concerns, but I really like Dickerson in that three-hole, and I can see some more opportunity not only for Dickerson to DH, but also one of my favorite players last year, Garrett Cooper. If Aguilar plays first, we got to make sure there's a spot for Cooper, and now with the universal DH, there is. And I could see the Marlins rotating DH between Dickerson and Cooper. Cooper hit 281 last year, 15 homers. He, I think those two... Dickerson, great bat, plays a lot of DH, opens up the field for a younger player like Garrett Cooper. Harold Ramirez, also another player who could definitely benefit from the universal DH in this trifecta rotation I am proposing in South Florida for the Marlins. Boy, that was a fast 25 minutes of a show. And we've only covered the National League East. And some of that continued over from Monday. So let's move out, I tell you what, to the West. I'm going to leave the Dodgers alone. Because the Dodgers have so many players who can rotate their batting order. Oh my gosh. I'm sure there are a few players who will play every day. But I cannot imagine George says it was the best 25 minutes of his life. Love it. How about a shout out to George? All right. Does a great show on Sundays. If you've not listened to it, you got to tune in on Sunday afternoons and evenings for the George Hour, I'll call it. Tonight at 7, my main man Phil Chaplin will be on. Tomorrow night, happy hour. Yeah. Happy hour with the Hap. King Hap. Andrea, great job this morning. Lenny, always a great job too. I'll never do that, George. This network, and I haven't even spoken of Kevin Hastings, who does a super duper job. This network, guys, I mean, we should charge for this, right? This is good stuff. Isn't it a lot better than what you hear on some networks you pay for? Who will go unnamed? Talking about the Padres. Let's do it. This, to me, could be the most intriguing of DH possibilities. I'm not going to even suggest one. I'm going to suggest several. Wow. A player that gets a lot of talk on our network. Franchi Cordero. That's right. Franchi. 
And Franchi, who has had injury problems, is now in a position with an extra batter in the lineup to show us what he's really like. This is a player that Fernando Tatis has said, hey, he's like, great. He's 25 years old. In the Dominican Winter League, this past winter, Franchi hit 364. He had a 1.037 OPS. In the Cactus League, which was limited, he continued to hit in the same way. And when you're talking sleepers, you're talking Franchi. I think Franchi gets the opportunity over Naylor to start the season. Now, what will he do with the opportunity? TBD. Another player who definitely, I think, benefits from the DH is newly acquired Trent Grisham. We talked about the trade from the Milwaukee perspective yesterday. Now we're going to talk about the trade from the San Diego perspective now. Grisham, two levels of minor league last year. Hit 381. 34 games at AAA San Antonio and then in August promoted to the Brewers, and in the Milwaukee lineup, he started 37 of 53 games, despite a crowded outfield in Milwaukee. He did have a 26% strikeout rate, but he was a rookie. He's learning. Okay, now a full-year batting average trade to the Padres, but now he's going from a very home run. I talked about this yesterday from the positive. Now I'm going to talk about it from the negative. He went from a very hitter-friendly Miller Park in Milwaukee to a very non-hitter-friendly park in San Diego. Petco. He does have 25 home run power over a full season. He does have double-digit stolen base ability. Will he be a platoon? Will he be a regular? Now, San Diego traded away Manny Margot. We know that. And now Grisham has the opportunity, but he's going to have to show he can hit lefties. He's a left-handed bat. He only hit 219 against left-handers last year. All the more reason I think Franchi Cordero has a real legitimate shot. Now, I was reading in the chat room that some think Pham could be a DH in San Diego. Yeah. I mean, Tommy Pham has a great bat. He's 32 years old. I think he probably plays more at DH, but I think the DH position opens up opportunity for these other guys. And then there's the ever-present popular flavor... Will Myers. Will Myers. Long-term contract. Wasn't he lucky? Now, he started off the spring hitting 300 with five RBIs and a team leading three home runs in Cactus League. He only struck out 18% of the time. He struck out 34% of the time last year. That was second worst among major league hitters with at least 400 at-bats. So, do we see the 2019 major league version in 2020 of Will Myers? Or do we see the Cactus League version 2020 of Will Myers during regular season 2020? Because they're two different players. They're, They're very much two different players. The Padres have shown the inclivity to play Will Myers, no matter how poorly he performs in the field. And so I'm of the opinion the big winners, dh in San Diego, are Franchi, are Will Myers, are Trent Grisham, and Tommy Pham. I think if I'm looking at this roster... As much as I love the bat of